that's what makes me fearful for this journalist because uh, quite honestly, um, Russia is moving in such a Stalinist direction now under Putin. They're calling the case top secret against the Wall Street Journal reporter. He has he, he is thought to have been seen being bundled into a car at a um, at Ekaterinburg, which is a town, uh, sort of industrial, military industrial town, uh, a long way from Moscow. But then he turned up in court, um, you know, in Moscow uh, without um anyone being informed of the nature of the charges against him apart from you know this terrifying word espionage and uh and as a result the shutters have come down in moscow and i think we're now going into uh you know it will have to be a matter of high level diplomacy to see what can be done to help him yeah what kind of things was he reporting on i mean you know if we were reading the wall street journal over the last 6 months what would, what would we have seen from him well, I mean, quite often, one it's worth looking even at the most recent stories. Did something he write recently really get under their noses? And he just had a big story very recently, only days ago, about how uh, Russia's industry is faltering now and that they're expecting to have a very bad year, that you know, people have been writing about how Russia seemed to have got away with all these sanctions hitherto, but now um, he's been talking to sources about uh, industry really failing. Right. And did that get um, under the nose of the Russians? He, he reported about relations between um, President Xi of China and President Putin, which, you know, are not as sort of on uh, quite as sort of glad handing as um, both parties would might, you know, certainly the Russians would might like to make it appear. Did that offend anybody? You know, what what's going on? They're claiming they caught him red handed. But the truth is that um, the journalism that Evan was doing it is, is simply the sort of good, um, the good journalism that anybody does, which is to dig around for yourselves. He's not in Russia. Uh, he's not in Russia to report on just. Um, I'm sorry, there seems to be a big noise in the background. I hope you can still hear me. Yes, we can hear you absolutely fine. So apologies. Oh, great. For that. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's he he is not in Russia to just report on Putin's speeches and other things like that. But Russia is now under censorship. And we can see how authoritarian Putin is being by the fact that, uh, you know, recently, very recently, um, a father was imprisoned for the drawings of his young child that seemed to show Ukrainian sympathies. Yeah. That's how Stalinist Russia is. And that's what makes me fearful for this journalist, because uh, quite honestly, um, Russia is moving in such a Stalinist direction now under Putin. He's got so many political prisoners in jail. And we know from the case of the basketball player, Brittany Griner, who was held um, for nine months in quite appalling conditions, uh, you know, just for sort of walking into, you know, Russia with a, a sort of vape. The charges uh, are much more yeah. serious that this journalist is facing. So it's a very, very concerning situation. And where do you think, Sarah, this leaves employers? So the Wall Street Journal, uh, the newspapers that, you know, that, that we know and regard very highly in the West. I mean, is there ever going to be a time at which those papers will stop sending journalists to Russia because of the danger that those individuals face? Well, I'm director of the Marie Colvin Centre, and it is undoubtedly the case that her murder by the Assad regime uh, in 2012 led to a very chilling effect on journalism in Syria. It effectively became a sort of no-go zone for a lot of journalists. And it, so uh, I'm sure that um, that President Putin is trying to send a message. It's pretty brazen to arrest a, a journalist on the Wall Street Journal, one of the most distinguished papers. I mean, uh, you know, my heart goes out to him and his family. It's a very challenging situation for somebody that we know well at Times Radio. Emma Tucker, the former editor of the Sunday Times, only arrived as editor in chief of the Wall Street Journal in America last month and now has a major crisis on her hands. Um, and uh, I'm sure it is designed to send a signal that um, they expect it that if um, Western journalists want to operate in, in Russia, they have to just, you know, 
report on uh you know the meet and greets or something you know like they can attend a you know they can report on a summit between president putin and president xi of china but they can't say anything you know critical about it or you know they can they're not supposed to dig around they're supposed to take what is given to them at face value this flies in the face of you know all our journalistic standards yeah. and, and what realistically sarah do you think can be done uh, by the american government to try and get evan home safely well, one of the problems is people have started to talk about prisoner swaps. Brittany Griner, the basketball player, was swapped with a um, very uh, dangerous war criminal um, who was being held by America. But the fact is that um, uh, these prisoner swaps normally only take place after somebody has been found guilty of charges. And, you know, I really hope this doesn't come to that. Um, because the poor guy is going to be in jail for the next um, couple of months already. That much is clear because nothing's going to happen, we're told now, until March, sorry, May 29th. So this is really an awful situation mm -hmm. and, and it could be one that is very, very uh, prolonged. I hope I'm wrong. If you enjoyed that, what should people do? Well, the best thing would be if you could listen to us on Times Radio, Monday to Thursday, 3 till 5, Jane and Fee.